Hello, and welcome on in. It's been a while since I've done a video, and I figured that we actually have some new topics to cover, so this would be the perfect time to do another little playthrough video. I'm gonna look at uh, HB's recreation of Spyglass Hill. We'll just go ahead and get started. Little disclaimer on the top, this is not my first run through of this video. I tried to write up like a rough script of the notes I wanted to hit on this, but it's really hard to play around of golf and talk and uh, reference a script, so it didn't really work. Um, I'll just kind of do this one off the cuff, so if it's a little meandering or repetitive, if I stumble over some words, my apologies. It's, it's, it's really hard to do a prepared uh, kind of uh, almost like presentation on it while playing around a golf, so we'll just dive into it. And I just have to start off with, you know, I've always been, you know, a, an outspoken critic when, like, when I see things that I feel are, are, are lacking in this game. So, you know, I have never been afraid to, to say what I think about HB's work. And I figure it's only fair that, you know, when they really step it up and do something that's significantly improved, that I uh, acknowledge that as well. And that's really what I wanted to do on this one. The... The quality of the the craftsmanship um, and the attention to detail on this course is just significantly improved over over previous uh, HB efforts. Um, you know, obviously, I'm assuming Christian did a lot of the work on this one because, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff done on this course that I know Christian knows how to do, and I haven't really seen any evidence in any other courses that um, uh, other, other employees at 2K are doing these things. Like the, the planting is so significantly improved. The, um, like touching up the edges of surfaces, transitions of surfaces, the bunkers, bunker sculpting, like all of the little things that go into making a golf course are just so significantly improved on this one that, um, Either he's been training your team on, on how to build courses, or he did a lot of the work himself. I'm, I'm assuming it's the latter one, because I think I can kind of pick out his, uh, um, kind of his handiwork here. You know, it, it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, recognizing an artist by his breaststrokes. You know, I feel like there's a lot of Christian things on this course, so, um, you know, job well done. Really turning what to me, like, isn't the most exciting course being added to the game into, um, really the, the gem of, of the, uh, the real course catalog that this game has to offer. Obviously, I think Christian's original work and then the community-made stuff that, you know, admittedly I'm a little biased because I was involved in that, but I think those things are the highest quality courses in the game, uh, by a considerable margin over over the rest of HB's catalog. And this is kind of the first one that I think hits like a lot of those notes that I think is like, that looks like a polished professional project in ways that some of the other ones have not. Like just the sight lines, being able to see the landing areas off, the, you know, where in places that you're supposed to, like planting, not getting in your way, but really decorating the area. It's just, or just, Obviously not using splines for bunkers and using uh, brushes for bunkers instead. It's such a huge improvement. Like, I think HB has used uh, spline bunkers as a crutch for a very long time. And while the spline tool is great for um, like greens and fairways, larger shapes that don't have like too many really tight turns... It works fantastic for those. It's really not up to the job for bunkers, especially more rugged bunkers. Like if you're doing dune kind of areas like this, it's absolutely not up to the task. So yeah, splining bunkers is bad, and HP don't don't spline bunkers. You know, let let Christian give you tips on how to do that. Like do it like this. It's a lot better. Um, now again, because I've 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 attempted this video uh, a couple times. We've done a couple passes, and you know, there's a uh, so I already know the little spots that I want to hit. Um, one of the notes I had is places that could still probably be touched up. 
a lot of the off course stuff, you know, it's not directly in the um in the way of the player, but it's kind of still in sight. You can, you know, you you can still see all of the the roads and stuff off into the distance. And when they're just very wonky and wavy, like they're not smoothed out and polished at all, it's again, it's it's a minor thing, but lots of minor things can add up to really either add or diminish to the perceived quality of something. So, like, um, you know, it, it's, in and of itself, it's not a big deal, but the fact that those are still there tells me a lot of things about what goes into this process. Such as, you know, I'm assuming that, to me, it kind of suggests that while there's been massive improvements into the process that makes these courses, because, again, more obviously skilled work is ending up in the final product. That's a huge improvement. Um, but there's also stuff that is pretty obvious to a trained eye um, that like, I think a skilled designer could pick up immediately, um, so which suggests to me that um, that Christian doesn't necessarily have kind of uh the the final edit on these things and you know like that might be something that should be considered because frankly from what i've seen of the work of everyone at hb he's the most qualified person to be making these courses and has the best eye for what needs to happen in, in them so like stuff like the little touch-ups on off course stuff which is really to me one of the only things that still needs to be tweaked on these courses like that's something that i think a skilled eye will pick up immediately and realistically it only takes you know like an hour or two of of skilled labor to fix it so kind of the the opportunity cost i guess for for going through and fixing that is incredibly low there's no there's no reason not to do it it's it's not a it's not a huge commitment or undertaking to do those things it's just kind of getting out of your own way and letting you know letting the skilled people do what they do best but in terms of like actual encore stuff i you know i've i've done about three rounds of this at this point um just trying to to get a, a a video where you know I I cover all the topics I want. I think my first one I didn't think I was being harsh, and I you know listened back, and it was far harsher than I than I um you know than I thought I was. I'm just like that's not the tone that we wanted to hit, so we redid it. Um, and then the second one was just kind of rambling. So so this is attempt number three, and. Uh, you know, so I've done multiple rounds on this course, and I really don't have any, like, any real feedback on things that need to improve um, uh, on this course that isn't just polishing the off-course stuff that I think where your LiDAR data isn't great. Um, and then the greens are a little borderline in some spots, like, as it's a tendency that you have for your courses, I think they just don't quite translate to the way that your game plays. So in order to replicate how they play in real life, I think you need to soften the green slopes just a little bit. Like we're talking kind of imperceptible changes, like, you know, raising the low end of a green and, like, lowering the high end of a green by, like, two or three inches either way. Just to soften the grades a little bit so that essentially the ball will stop by the hole easier um essentially avoiding kind of those yellow to orange slopes around the holes which is you know something that's a, a good thing to do in terms of playability this is a very like this is a perfectly functional golf course um and again it's it's significantly better than some of the really questionable ones in the hb catalog such as east lake or saint george which are fundamentally unplayable in a lot of ways um so this one is currently looking at being scheduled for tgc tours uh 
and it's either going on elite or plat, which are the top two levels of our our kind of ladder. Um, so I know from personal experience working with HB and 2K on official courses for this game that it was absolutely hammered into us that, like, please don't make it too hard. Don't make the courses too hard. We can't have, like, really hard golf courses. We want it to be approachable for casual players. And I completely get that. Like, that makes perfect sense. But with that ethos in mind, I think... Uh, HP has had a tendency in the past to completely miss that mark in their own work. Like, some of their courses are are unplayably like made. They're like they're incredibly difficult to the point where it's like, oh, like some of the greens are just non-functional, and these are all functional if maybe just a touch difficult. And I'm not sure that they know where this falls in kind of that difficulty curve. I also just want to call out this spot in terms of, like, this is just so well done. This is, like, again, one of the nicest views on the course, in my opinion. It's just a nice little spot with a good sight line. And when, like, when everything is sculpted correctly and surfaced correctly, it really pops. And this just, you know, this, this, the presentation is professional in a way that, you know, I haven't really seen yet. And it's just really awesome to see. Like, keep up the good work. Please keep doing more of this stuff. You know, if it, like, this is a great start. I want to, like, if I'm being honest, I don't think this is the ceiling for what you guys can do. And I know that you're working on Pinehurst, because I believe that was in your, your, your timeline that you released. Um, like, that's a huge opportunity for you guys. And it's really important that you get that correct. It's... It's going to be a challenge just because the style of course is significantly harder to capture than this one. The, the really rugged, um, naturalistic type courses take a lot of effort to get right and a lot of skill. Because, you know, I, I would know I've done a lot of courses and those are always the hardest ones. The, the, your kind of like more manicured Parkland courses like this one are a little easier generally. This one has a couple... Um, uh, what do you want to call it? It has a couple dune holes that would be similar to Pinehurst. And, you know, the the work that was done on those is definitely up to par. But, you know, it's... You know, some of those greens can be kind of severe, and I think a lot of care needs to be put in it into making sure that those function in this game. Because if you, if you just dump the LiDAR, um, the LiDAR data in without kind of... Um, kind of checking it and maybe massaging little bits of it, you're 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 gonna end up with a course that doesn't play the way that the real course does. Like there's some real fine margins, and you want to make sure that you, you you hit those hit those boxes there. But again, I did I did a similar video on Pebble, and I feel like I had to of uh, I couldn't just list everything that was wrong with it in order to keep the video down and just sort of triage like the most egregious parts of it, and j just to keep it under. I don't remember what it ended up being? I think it was like forty five minutes. I'm gonna fly around this course in twenty minutes just yammering because there's only like three or four things to point out. It's really just, yeah, like some green slopes like this one, this is right on the absolute edge of what you can get away with. Like I would probably take the raise tool just so you're not like screwing up the, in, like all of the, the contours on the green and just bumping the hill down like two or three inches. That won't change your green contours, but will just ease the grade that it's at. So essentially you'd be like, oh, if this is like a 5% grade, you want to bump it down like a 3 or 4% grade. It's not going to be noticeable at all in terms of like the accuracy of the green. You're just easing it slightly to make it more functional without changing any of the actual character of the green itself. Like little changes like that are going to go, you know, are a huge step forward in terms of how you present your courses. Like if you can get those things right, it, it, it's 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 gonna pay dividends for you especially on courses that you know are like tougher 
and uh, like kind of more renowned, more widely known by casual golf audiences. Like again, Pinehurst is a really big opportunity for you guys. That's a big get in terms of like uh, a course that both kind of your golf architecture nerds and casual audiences alike are going to be familiar with and excited to play. And if you can present that in a professional manner, then like, again, that's, that's a huge win for you guys. And, you know, it doesn't like, obviously based on this work, like doing that very well is within your grasp. It, it's, you know, it, I cannot emphasize enough how much of a step forward this is. And, you know, it's, it's very obvious to, I mean, I'm sure, you know, maybe casual players will still pick up on it, but to a trained eye, it's very obvious what a huge step forward this is in terms of technical stuff. Again, it just pays div dividends in how the course presents itself and how it plays. It's a lot of little things adding up that, you know, traditionally have gone unnoticed in the past and, you know, just are correct it's you know it it functions so much better like you know spyglass isn't a course that i'm that excited about being in game because it's just it's a weird funky resort course that's just kind of like a add-on to pebble but you know just the way it's made and the fact that it's just so much more playable and professionally made than all of the other ones means that it's something I would be excited to play when it comes up in matchmaking versus just tolerated like a lot of the other courses are. Oop. Oh, that's a bad swing. Oh, well. We, we, we've gotten away without too many of those previously. But yeah, it's, again, it's just, it's a huge step forward. Um, oh, I, I played through one of the, there was a cart path on one of the holes previously I blew through that was canted. It was like kind of stuffed into some trees and sloped off at 30 degrees that probably could have been touched up. Uh, so again, it, it's, these are the things that if you're letting your, letting your experts f fix things that need to be fixed, it really does not take a lot of time and effort. It's almost trivial to do in the right hands. And it's just, you know, like, let, let, let the let the skilled folks do their thing. But, again, it, it's this is a huge step forward in correcting a lot of the things that I think didn't work on some of your earlier stuff. And, you know, I'm really excited to see what you guys come out with next. Because this is... Again, it's 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 really good. It's quite solid. But anyways, thank you everyone for tuning along or uh, tuning in and tagging along. It's been great having you, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.